Hey YouTube, this is Itchy and I wanted to uh, give you some clues about things you may notice where you live uh, in your own environment um, that could be an indication that you have high radiation levels. Not all of us have a Geiger counter, um, but there are some things that I've certainly noticed in, in my area and I want to share them with you and also a list of things that you can do to minimize your exposure to radiation. Now there's been some mutations that have been showing up in the news. This was a one-eyed shark that was caught in Baja about a week ago. There was also a three-eyed fish found near a nuke plant in Argentina. And um, there's many salmon that have migrated from the Japan area to the Pacific Northwest that are showing up very sick. I would say at this point, um, seafood and sushi is probably not safe to eat. I'm going to enclose a link also to RadNet data that's been put on a Google spreadsheet where you can see the EPA testing results. Unfortunately, they were stopped in April and they have not been shared with us since. But what's listed on here are all the cities in the U.S. that showed positive results for plutonium, strontium, cesium, cesium and milk, cesium and rain. And I will enclose that data. Please share it with people that you care about um, so they can see for themselves. Um, that we had high levels and any other information that I get about those levels I will pass along. Now there's also been some reports of um, mutations in Japan, in Alberta, Canada, and some in my area that I'll show you shortly. Beets, sunflowers, burn marks on roses. This kind of spread I saw in a um, young oak tree. These double flowers. More burns on leaves. I'll put a link to that article on the bottom. Uh, some cats in Japan that have uh, eye issues similar to uh, babies that were born around Chernobyl. And dandelions in Alberta. And my understanding is that um, dandelions uptake a lot of water. So that may be why it's showing up sooner in that variety of plant. Here's a video of one. It has a very thick stalk. Multiple um, flower heads. Now this is a reason why I'm also avoiding lettuce and spinach because it has been detected in plants here in the U.S. and lettuce and spinach uptake a lot of water to grow. I'll enclose a link to this video also. Now what have I been seeing in my area? First of all, um, I have noticed pretty much the entire summer some strange rays and so forth. Uh, then I am attributing, and this is my opinion, uh, that it's a sign of uh, radio radioactive particles and xenon gas in our atmosphere. There are rays that can occur. You will see them sometimes coming off a sunset, um, but not to this extent. In fact, the the ones that I have documented in weather books are called crepuscular rays. 
but I have seen these rays stretching from one side of the horizon to another and that's not normal. In fact, in all the weather books that I have, and I have good ones, um, this is not an anomaly that is uh, indicated. Now if you search for it online, I have seen uh, mentions of it now, but uh, it, it didn't really exist before this year, at least not in any of the books that I've seen. And I've seen these in different colors. I have seen videos of them on YouTube. Sheila Aliens has some that she put together, um, I believe it was called Atmospheric Anomalies, where people have recorded these rays in other parts of Michigan and in other parts of the country, Naples, Florida. Uh, so you may want to take a look at that. Another thing that I've noticed is um, some very uh, strange orange and pink and red and yellow sunsets. And it's not uh, usual to see that on a daily basis, although we had those colors in our sunsets pretty much every day this summer. Um, this is just an area uh, around where I live. Um, it's a bike path called the Paint Creek Trail that I've been going on for 30 years and uh, this summer was the first time that I have seen um, massive plant death in, in this area. Now, this is a low-line area. Um, there's a creek that runs all the way and crisscrosses this path. Low-line areas will tend to have higher accumulation um, because of the, the fallout that's concentrated in rain. And if you look at lung tissue and what hot particles do to lung tissue, these pictures of plants are very similar. And these are also similar to the um, fallout that's being noticed around Japan, in addition to yellowing of trees, um, redness of pine trees. And a lot of these plants are very hardy species. And they're not something that I'm used to seeing any kind of plant damage. This is uh, a grapevine. And it's not only burns in the leaves, but um, like a, an ashy white substance. And I know the planes have been strain, spraying here nonstop all summer. And that could have something to do with it. And other people have theorized that these plant changes may be from core exit that was sprayed on the Gulf of Mexico during the BP uh, oil disaster and that the core exit through evaporation and then recondensation has been raining out in different parts of our country and that the core exit could be causing this kind of damage also. Either way, it's not normal and it's very alarming. Um, I notice it more in open areas such as this where the grasses are dying. It appears to be more prevalent like I said, in areas where water accumulates. These are milkweeds, again, very hardy species of plant. Here's the burn marks. It burns right through the pods of the milkweed. And then this um, white, ashy substance that coats some of the leaves. Now this could also be a fungus. And uh, radiation will cause fungus. Um, bacteria and viruses to be much stronger, more invasive. All these plants, by the way, that I photographed were along approximately a one-mile stretch of path. Now, another thing that um, 
would be an indication that uh, there's some kind of environmental poisoning going on is um, animal deaths. And that's something that I've noticed around here too. Um, throughout the summer, there's been dead animals in the woods. And usually when, when animals are, are sick or dying, they tend to um, go into hiding, go into a dark place where they can be alone. These animals are just um, dead right in the middle of pastures. Um, I have a retention pond behind my house where there's been Canadian geese that have died over the summer. Um, there's been a, um, a noticeable decrease in the amount of ducklings that seem to be surviving to adulthood. Out of the last batch of ducks that was born in the pond, there were nine of them. Only one survived and one of them had a small wing. The other animals that you would be noticing um, that, that may be dying would be animals that you would tend to find around a water supply like rats. Also mice, squirrels, rabbits, raccoons. Uh, we had a nest of baby red squirrels. Uh, next to our house in some pine trees that are so, are showing damage also and that squirrel died on the steps to my apartment about a week ago. He was just dead laying there. Um, not a good sign. Those are southern creepers that were just showed. Again, very hardy vine. And this is all different varieties of plants. If you were growing food in your garden and any of the leaves looked like this, I would not eat the vegetables and I would try to get a Geiger counter and, and check them. And if they show um, high radiation, then you, you have to bury them. Now this, these pictures were all taken to before the cold weather set in in this area, so this is not uh, fall damage or cold weather damage. This I believe is a mutation. This is an oak sapling. And again, I live in southeast Michigan. You'll also notice um, berries and seem larger than they usually grow. Wild grapes, this is really evident around here. The, the grape bunches are huge and they don't usually get that big. Um, they are edible and, and I have eaten them in the past and that's why I noticed it this year. I mean, look at this. Well, there's several different um, species of plants that are notorious for cesium uptake in soil. One of them is mushrooms. If you're seeing a lot of mushroom growth in your area, that could be an indication uh, that you have high cesium levels, especially if the mushrooms are dark brown or black in color. This is something that was noticed in Chernobyl. Sunflowers also uptake cesium, but it's very important that you don't eat the seeds. I think that might be what the red squirrel had been eating. And then these rays coming off the clouds, they're almost every day, and they go all the way across the sky. Um, very dense, and, and I've got a uh, research paper that I'm starting um, talking about the refractive index between water, oil, gas, and air. And that's something I know a little bit about from uh, refracting patients for glasses and ophthalmology. And even off the full moon, there's rays, although they're difficult to photograph. Bright red skies, pink skies, orange skies. The yellow is, is the most concerning, and if you haven't seen uh, my video yet about the uh, yellow sky in 
Tucson, please.